quickly moving on now let's come on to the classification of oral tumors so in the head and neck area you can have tumors which are purely based on soft tissue no bone is involved you can have a connective tissue tumor where the tumors are coming out of the bone itself but generally speaking whenever we talk about the tumors the soft tissue tumors mainly we talk about epithelial tumors whenever a tumor has got an epithelial origin you call that as a carcinoma right so any epithelial tissue a malignant tumor arising from of a epithelial origin is known as carcinoma in oral carcinoma unless proven otherwise squamous cell carcinoma is much common so almost when they talk about oral cancer they exclusively say it is a squamous cell carcinoma it's not to say that other type of tumors cannot come in the oral cavity but the predominant type in the oral cavity is a squamous cell carcinoma what comes on the face on the exterior can be a basal cell carcinoma which is much more common in the what we call as a white population a caucasian population the uh, when we talk about a uh, indian subcontinent who has a melanin pigment in their skins usually the chances of them developing basal cell carcinoma is much lesser right basal cell carcinoma is much more common in the caucasian population in the indian subcontinent you see that much and much lesser squamous cell carcinoma even on the skin is uh, uh, relatively common when we talk about a connective tissue origin tumors they are called sarcoma as we said epithelial tumors are called carcinomas the connective tissue tumors are called sarcomas pigmented lesions wherever we talk about pigmented the melanin so anything which comes with the pigmented lesions it's called a melanoma unfortunately there is no benign form of melanoma it's most of it it's a malignant we don't call it as a malignant melanocarcinoma you can if you are talking about the correct terminology it is melanocarcinoma but even when you say melanoma it is malignant right and then you have your lymphoreticular which is blood cell related right so lymphoreticular tumors which can also affect the oral cavity you have lymphomas leukemias and you also have got granular cell tumors this is in a broad sense these are the classification of the tumors which come in and around the oral cavity or the head and neck region epithelial tumors obviously you talk about tumors you have a benign you have a pre malignancy or now the current terminology is called potential malignancy and malignancy in benign we have a papilloma virgo vulgaris etc in a potentially malignant you talk about leukoplakia erythroplakia the erythroplakia is much more potentially malignant than leukoplakia oral submucous fibrosis as we have told now and there are certain conditions uh, earlier there used to be a small differentiation between what they call as a pre malignant condition and a pre malignant lesion now leukoplakias and erythroplakias were termed as pre malignant lesions whereas oral submucous fibrosis and the plummer vinson syndrome where they were considered as a pre malignant conditions however now all have been plugged together and then now they are called potentially malignant lesions or potentially malignant disorders that is how it is the current terminology works out right malignancy squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma as i said melanocarcinoma is the more correct terminology but even when you say melanoma it is malignant right so now from now on most of it what we are going to talk about is a squamous cell carcinoma because we talk about oral cancer here oral cancer unless specified otherwise it is a squamous cell carcinoma so oral carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma it's a commonest malignancy of the oral cavity you can get sarcoma right you can get other malignant lesions also however uh, squamous cell carcinoma is very very common the early lesion what you see i am talking about a lesion you are not talking about a pre malignancy here a lesion itself we talk about white or red patch a small growth you can have a intermediate type of lesion where you have a persistent ulceration the lymph nodes can be enlarged in that or patient can come with a huge large exophytic mass unfortunately even today in our part of the world we start seeing patients so huge 
huge masses of tumor which is fungating through the skin before they come. That is the reason when in the first slide itself what I was talking it is about our social responsibility. As our dental care providers I think we have access to the oral cavity. So, if a patient we are going to do a the oral prophylaxis or a filling or a root canal or a crown or anything for that matter. When we are examining the oral cavity, we should not be examining only for the patient's complaint. It is imperative that we do have a systematic look at the entire oral cavity for noting out any lesions because it is an ultimate shame. We talk about an area which is directly visible to our eye. A patient can examine themselves, but more importantly, whenever they come for a dental examination, it is so easy to examine the patient systematically, buccal mucosa, floor of mouth, the lip, tongue, the lateral aspect, the palate. That is it. You are done. If you could have examined it and then gone in for the, gone in for your, your regional lymph node palpation, I think more often than not, we should be able to catch it. And should we suspect a lesion, I think it is imperative and it is important from our side, either we perform the biopsy ourselves or refer a patient to an appropriate place who can actually either follow that patient up or do a biopsy to confirm a diagnosis. Because if you catch anybody early, then the chances of this patient having an extremely good quality of life is very high. However, when the patient comes in a very advanced stage of the disease, then life becomes that much more difficult for both the treating physician as well as the patient and their club, uh, family.